to, I mean, listen to the word of God. We have a guest speaker from, uh, from Bangalore. Uh, uh, he is uh, Pastor Nibo Skaria. He is from Bangalore and uh, actually he is a worship leader. Uh, but at present, uh, he is uh, uh, ministering in the Whitefield City Church, Bangalore. Whitefield City Church, Bangalore. Uh, you know, he, he is blessed with uh, uh, his wife, Sicily, and uh, uh, two kids. And we are so glad that you are with us uh, this morning uh, to preach to us. And uh, uh, actually, his brother, Nobi, and, and his wife, Blessy, also is joining uh, in our uh, worship service this morning. You know, when I, when I think about uh, that family, uh, we have uh, many uh, wonderful and beautiful memories in our life because uh, while we were uh, ministering in Bangalore, uh, IPC Bambasandra uh, Church was, uh, has been a great blessing for us. And uh, uh, actually, he's uh, Pastor Nibo's uh, parents, uh, father, the dear Sekriya Chan. And uh, he was the pioneer a believer, actually the minister of that church, actually, you know. Uh, in, in, under his uh, uh, leadership, it was a, there, there is a, there's a beautiful church there, and uh, uh, we we have been blessed by that church also, and uh, we are so thankful to God for that family. And uh, 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 Pastor Nibu has been working as a as a Bible translator minister before, but uh, now he is I mean pastoring in a church, so he's a blessed minister of God, and this is a great privilege for us to uh, have him with us this morning, and uh, as we are. Uh, sitting in the presence of God. I would request everyone to uh, pray for him so that uh, God may speak to us and uh, continually. So let us all put our hands together and welcome uh, Pastor Nibu Skaria in our midst. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, hope I'm audible if I can get a yes. sign if I'm audible. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Pastor. I'm really privileged to be in the presence of God and specifically, and I'm so happy to uh, be part of uh, the Sunday service in the morning there, uh, uh, being a part of Eternal Life Church of God uh, in, uh, in Sacramento, California. And I'm really glad that God has given me an opportunity to preach from his word. I'm always glad, uh, doesn't matter which geographical location you're speaking from or you're speaking to, I believe this God's word is so powerful, as powerful to transform our hearts for God's glory. And I'm so happy for uh, Sam Guti Pastor, uh, Praise Auntie, Aksa and Albin. We had a very, very great bonding when we were in, it still continues to have that bonding. We had a wonderful, uh, close relationship with the family when they were in Bangalore. Uh, Sankuti Pass has been a great blessing to us as a family, um, whether it is my family, immediate family here, and many people around. Uh, they've been a great blessing. And I really thank God for the way that God is using them, the place where God has placed them right now. I'm really happy and glad for all of you that we could join in this way. Uh, specifically through Zoom, though we don't enjoy this much. Uh, uh, right now, situation in Bangalore is kind of under control. So for the first time, uh, we had been uh, joining as a, as a church. We had been coming together since a few months. But today, this Sunday morning, uh, by the way, today it's, it's midnight here. We had a Sunday morning worship. So in this morning, <clears throat> we had uh, almost 55 people coming together. And, uh, and I was uh, really happy because I was seeing many faces coming together after almost a year. It's been a real, real tough year for all of us. Uh, something that the entire world is struggling with and the entire world is in tears and crying out to God to have uh, you know, mercy at this point of time. I'm still grateful to God for God protecting us from uh, this pandemic. Uh, but uh, we also must accept this fact that many loved ones, many people whom we know is no more um, but the greatest hope that we have is this, that we are uh, being saved by the blood of, uh, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, and we know who God is. That's the greatest privilege. And I'm happy uh, to come to, uh, to you all this morning, this morning to share from God's word. Shall we turn our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. I shall, I shall read it for you. I'm reading it from ESV worship. <clears throat> His divine power has granted to us 
all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire for this very reason make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self control and self control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for if these qualities are yours and, in, and are increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ for who ever lacks these qualities is so near sighted that he is blind having forgotten that he has cleansed from his former sins therefore brothers we all more diligent to conform your calling and election for if you practice these qualities you will never fall for in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into eternal kingdom of our lord a savior jesus christ shall we look unto the lord in prayer heavenly father we once again surrender ourselves before you lord thank you for those beautiful wonderful meaningful songs that we sang together praising your name you're reminding us how faithful you are how wonderful and how awesome you are lord and we wanted to give you all the glory and honor lord father as we going to study your word together Father God, we speak that is we we pray that this this word is made written by your Spirit through your sermon, Lord. Speak to our hearts in this morning, O oh Father. Father, we pray that we would humble ourselves completely before you as we hear from your word, Lord. Let this word uh, build us, O oh Father. God, strengthen us, O oh Lord, so that we will be able to do what you want us to do here on this earth, O oh Father God. We completely surrender ourselves. Bless all of us together. Lord, you anoint me. You strengthen me to preach from your word. May your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray together. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> Apostle Peter uh, has written specifically two letter, First Peter and Second Peter, uh, to a church in Asia Minor. When he was writing the First Peter, he was specifically the letter, the first letter. He was writing to a church which were going through severe persecution. So when you read First Peter, it's actually speaks about steadfastness and importance of uh importance of staying strong in the lord in midst of persecution in midst of trouble that is the main focus in the first peter in the beginning of first peter few uh, few chapters specifically one first two chapter he's speaking about the blessed hope we have in christ and reminds his disciples so reminds the people in asia minor saying that because we have a blessed hope make sure that you you stand strong uh you know with a strict strict spirit in the lord in midst of uh persecution and it's also he encourages uh, the families to stay uh in in bonding in love uh, doing what really god wants them to do in second peter uh he actually this is a, this is a letter which is kind of a reminder to the church a reminder of everything that peter has already apostle peter has already spoken about that's why he was uh, 12 and 13 uh, he speak about it now second peter chapter 1 was 12 and 13 he says therefore i intended always to remind you of these qualities though you know them and are established in the truth that you have i think it is right as long as i am in body to stir you up by a way of reminder so peter says everything that i'm going to speak to you about you already know uh you know the, about the qualities which i've already spoken from verse 3 to 11 and which i've already made a detailed write to you but i just as a reminder because right now my time has come to, uh, almost close to go from this world but towards the end i just wanted to remind you so that you will stand strong in faith verse 3 to 11 is a packed chapter i mean i mean a packed with the flow of lot of a strong i mean i mean i would say a lot of Uh, uh, a lot of verses which reminds of god's faithfulness and how important is uh, to have a godly life here on this earth so peter reminds apostle peter reminds the church to be faithful in the very calling that god has called them let's read every verse each verse plus three on what's to understand what is peter really wants to unpack before people first verse verse three it says his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain of to life and godliness 
Peter reminds his people saying that God is the source of all the blessing. That's how he says. He begins with his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and of godliness. So every single thing that we are in need of, that is personally when we speak about our life, our, uh, our growth in Christian life, Paul, Peter says that God has already given you those things. God has given you the divine power so that you can have life in its fullness. Life in its fullness, when I say it is, doesn't, mean, doesn't mean that uh, it, it changes, depends on uh, the situations of your life. No, regardless of the situations, God has given you an abundant life. And Christ himself said, I've come to this world to give you life, life in abundance. That means expeed, uh, uh, eternal life itself. So, so Paul, Peter says that see, God has given you the divine power, right? And he has granted to all of us uh, those things that pertain to life and what a godliness. I always say this fact that God will never ask us anything or God will uh, you know, never demands anything from us until and unless he provides the power. He pro until he, unless he provides the power. Uh, how do I say? Uh, he provides the very uh, strength to do, do those things. So God will never demand or ask us to do anything until and unless he provides the strength, until and unless he provides the power to do what it is. So that's what Peter is trying to say. here. When we are living in this world, specifically this life here on this earth is becoming more tougher for a true Christian. Bible says that this world will hate you because we love Jesus. This world will continue to be an alien world because we love Jesus. This world will continue to hate his uh, God's people because we love the Lord. So that's the kind of world that we are living in. It was not different in the, at the time of Apostle Peter too. When Peter was lighting this letter, the Christians were going through severe persecution from different kings. So he says, yes, we are living in an alien, alien world. We are so generous in this world. We are, we are not permanent residents of this world. When we are not permanent residents of the world, we need to expect persecution. But in midst of this persecution, how can we have this godliness in us? How can we have this godly character in us? How can we have a life which is fulfilled? Bible says or Peter, Apostle Peter reminds all of us it is possible because God has given his divine power so that you and I can experience life in its fullness regardless of the situations. You know, when we look into the life of all the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ, including, uh, you know, including the last apostle, uh, Paul, his life, he speaks about the severe persecutions that he has gone through. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 7 onwards, uh, Paul reminds, reminds us this. I will read it for you. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 onwards. He says, but we have this treasure in the jars of clay to show that surpassing power belongs to God, not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. In this second Corinthians, specifically Paul says, we are being persecuted every day for God's glory. Because of because the sake of gospel, we've been persecuted. We go through a different kinds of trouble, trouble not only from outside, even from inside, even from our own brothers, we go through different kinds of trouble. So Paul reminds us, though we go through all these various kinds of problems, we are not forsaken, we are not destroyed, we are not crushed. Not we are not driven to despair. Why? Because of one reason. The one reason is this. There is a treasure that is in this jars of clay that which helps us, enables us, strengthens us, uh, and empowers us so that we can live a glorious life here on this earth regardless of what we go through. Amen. That's interesting. That's what Peter says. 
Peter begins encouraging his people, my dear believers, you need to understand this fact that you will have persecution here on this earth. You will have to go through tough times here on this earth for the sake of your faith. But do not worry, I will be with you and the divine power of God is in you and he will strengthen you, hallelujah, even when you do not understand how God is going to accomplish his plans and his purpose. So Paul actually says in, uh, you know, in the, in the, in second Corinthians chapter two and three, he says in three specifically, he says that, see, we are the aroma of God everywhere. Everywhere we go, we know we are persecuted. We are facing troubles. At the same time, God is also using us tremendously powerfully for the God's glory. So we are the aroma of God among the people, those who are being saved and among the people, those who are being, uh, you know, have been destroyed or being forsaken. The people, those who do not accept the message of God. Wherever we go, we are the aroma of God. You know why he says, because we have one treasure in this jars of clay. That's what Peter reminds us. We have this great divine power which provides the strength to do everything God has demanded us to do. Or God give us, gives us the strength uh, to all of us to do uh, everything for which God has called you, for which God has anointed you. When David was anointed by God, he was, he was not sure about how things are going to be. He said, Lord, why did you choose me? I'm absolutely not a person with any kind of skills. I do not have a lot of skills. I don't, I'm, I'm not, see, I'm not even military. My brothers are in military. They probably better know this stuff. But it was not about David. This was not about him. More than that, there was a divine power of God which has anointed him, helped him, strengthened him to be the king of the land. This morning, I just wanted to remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, I don't know what you are going through, what confusion you have in your heart about your own life. You will be wondering, Lord, how this life is going to be? How can I actually grow in Christ? Is it possible to grow in godliness in this, in this world where secularism has become become uh, become uh, you know become everything everything being being secularized you know demoralized moralized we do not know how things are going to be right moral subjective morals are not given the values what do we do at this point of time but god reminds you yes it is possible my dear brother it is possible my dear children because i will strengthen the same way i have strengthened in the past my own people and i will i will be with you even in midst of all this situation. So first thing that Peter reminds us, the divine power of God is for us. It is for us so that you and I can have an abundant, fulfilled life here on this earth. Let me tell you, when I say fulfilled life, do not mistake me by saying that all the materialistic possessions, by the way, no, that's not what the Bible is guaranteeing you. It is beyond that beyond what this materialist world can ever give you. It is about the eternal life, the joy of God, the joy of, of heaven will come in your heart and that help that will help you to experience and enjoy God in your life. So that's what he's speaking about life and godliness. Then, then Peter says that through the knowledge of him who called us to be his own glory and excellence, right? Uh, Paul, Paul says, <clears throat> Uh, Peter says that we need to grow in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. How do we grow in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ? We grow in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ by knowing him better. When you go to universities and you meet actually new people, you have new friends. But by the time that you finish your university studies, like probably three years or five, it depends on course what you do. You will not have, though you will have, you know, everybody in the class, but not all are your friends. There will be a few handful of people and there will be handful when I say there will be probably one or two people who would truly know you, right? Who will have a close connection, close bonding with you, right? That happens though you came to this college, came to the, went to the university, you met many, but few remains to be very close to you. How that happens? Because in this, in this, uh, in this, during the period of time that you spend at the university, you actually had a special bonding with that person. You spend more time with them. You spoke about yourself. That person shared about its heart. So you saw that connection and you sit together. You speak about a lot of things. That relationship grew and you became that best friend of that person. 
that's the same thing happens uh, in in uh, when when peter speaking about that we need to grow in the knowledge of lord jesus christ how do we grow in the knowledge of knowledge of lord jesus christ is by having a true intimate relationship with him so he says that divine power is granted to all of us right with the divine power is granted to all of us so that you and i can live a abundant life a godly life here on this earth then how do we actually get in get into that get to experience that he says by knowing christ better how do we know christ better bible reminds us to have an intimate relationship with him just like you have that intimate relationship with your friend and you know him better than uh, than the the first day that you met him how because of that relationship that we will grow you need to experience the knowledge is not about this head knowledge that we have read the bible and now you know about everything about jesus it is beyond that it is about experiencing him in your day to day activity that you inviting jesus presence you inviting and accepting god's lordship in your life you are not only jesus is not only your savior he is also your lord you are accepting the lordship of lord jesus christ you say lord i am not the one who going to decide the things for me i want you to decide the things for me i want your will to be done in my life i want to obey your commandment when we commit that when we get into that committed relationship bible says that then god will take us god will help you to know who he is as we grow in the relationship one of the prayer that to ephesians when paul was praying paul said lord let the eyes of the hearts of this people be opened so that they will know you better that was the prayer to ephesians when he prayed for the church of ephesus one of the strongest church, one of the very uh, close close con- closely connected to paul right then he prayed for the church saying lord i want their hearts to be more open more open i want their hearts to be uh, you know enlightened by your spirit so that they will know you better amen so the first thing the divine power god has given you second thing we get into this divine power we experience this divine power by knowing lord jesus christ why do we know lord jesus christ so that we can be glorified oh no 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 we are doing it for his glory so for his excellence it is for his glory and it is for his excellence and the second part peter says by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become the partakers of divine nature now what is the purpose of god peter says what is the very purpose of god calling us what is the what is the very purpose of god separating you from this world he says so that you and i can be a partaker of his divine nature it is not that we're going to become small gods in no way we are not small gods but bible speaks about becoming like lord jesus christ it simply means you talk like him you think like him you walk like him you behave like him you respond to the situation like him that intimacy that growing he says that is what he called us to he has called us to a purpose that purpose is that we all will share the divine nature of god why this holy spirit is dwelling in us oh we are the temple of god so that god will continue his sanctification work in us so that we will grow in jesus christ and will become like him so peter says that by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises two thing he says there is a precious and great promise for us there is a precious and a great promise which is granted by god god has given us that jesus told his disciples i'm actually going but do not worry i'm going to come back but i am going there i'm going to the presence of the father to prepare a house for you and i'll come back and i'll take you and we will sleep together forever right a great promise a great promise a precious promise that's how that's what peter specifically when you read uh, for chapter 1 itself uh, you know sorry uh, first peter itself you'll see a lot of places where peter has used this word called precious a precious he says god's word is precious god's word is powerful here he says that there is a precious promise for me which is precious than any promises in this world which is precious than the job i'm right now doing it's precious than the university i'm studying or oh, it's precious than anything else in this world and that is great promise i cannot compare any other promises with this promise 
This is, this is far more than any other promises in this world. You know, God has promised me so that, Bible says, so that I can be partaker of a divine nature. How can I be partaker of the divine nature? He says, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. He makes a very uh, clear uh, statement there. He says, we cannot be partakers of divine nature until and unless we reject the sinful desires of this world. Until and unless we say no to the sinful desires of this world. Jesus said, you cannot keep your leg in both the boat. That's not possible. You have to keep both the leg in a single boat. Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. I mean, God and money. That's not possible. Either you serve God or money. Right? Jesus was very specific. So that's easy. You can't do, you can't, you cannot live a duplicit life. That's not possible. If we were, if we are living a duplicit life, I will say that, you know, you, you and I cannot be a divine partaker of a divine nature of God. Yes. To be partaker of the divine nature of God, the Bible says that we need to escape. Escape from where? From the corruption that is there in this world. How, how the world is getting corrupted? It is because of the very sinful desires of this world. First John chapter 2 was uh, 15 to 17. If you, can, if you can ask someone to read for me, First John chapter 2 was 15 to 17. Can I ask someone to read? Just John. Oh, I'll should not I? Love, not yes. love the world for the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eye and the pride and possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world, and the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. I mean, he says the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever, whoever does the will of God will abide forever. So John reminds us that you see, you cannot love the things of this world. You cannot love. Love belongs to God alone. You can't love two things together. You can only love one thing. They say that, that one thing should be God. If you love the world and see if you say you, you say that you love the God too, that's not possible. You cannot love the world because and, and he, he just gives us this warning. See, every desires of the world is going to go because we are living in this temporary world. This is not a permanent world, right? Everything is going to be renewed. So he says, reminds, you know, John reminds us that you shouldn't be loving the things of this world. Peter also reminds the same thing to us. The two partakers of the divine nature, we must reject the things of the world. How can we reject the things of this world? By looking at one thing. Looking at what God has promised. That's why he said, see, I can, you can, we can. Or Peter says, I did this. I have rejected in the love of the world, the sinful desires of this world, because Jesus opened our eyes and showed us something more precious, something greater than anything else in this world. When we saw that, we rejected the world. Hebrew chapter 11 speaks about a lot of saints. The saints of the Lord who had actually started off the race well and finished the race of faithful. There it speaks about uh, many giants like, we call the faith giants like Moses, it speaks about uh, Noah, it speaks about uh, Abraham. You know, when we look at the life of Noah, he actually built an ark like a fool. The entire world was telling him, you are a fool. We, we, we don't know what you're doing. You are doing a foolish thing. But he was just being obedient to what God said. He knew every desires of this world, everything that he's going to see around, whatever he's seeing around, it's all going to die one day. It's all going to go one day. It's all going to be vanish one day because God has said. So what did he do? He just separated himself from the world. He preached to the world. He's a preacher of righteousness. He's told the destruction is going to come and he just did what God asked him to do. He was like a fool building an ark without knowing how things are going to be. Bible speaks about how Abraham 
hard to make a choice in his life to leave everything for the sake of a calling he left everything because god called him for the sake of that calling from above he left everything there was an opportunity for him to choose the land in between loth and his people there was a problem so abraham said to loth loth do one thing you choose the best whatever you want to choose i will take the rest of the things you know abraham could have told no loth you are actually uh, you cannot take it let me see which is the best one and i will choose the best one whatever whatever rest is there you can take no abraham said you can choose why did how did abraham can make that kind of that kind of you know you know decision because book of hebrews you don't have time to read all this in book of hebrews 11 when you read it says abraham was waiting not for a temporary house abraham was waiting for a house that was built by god as whose foundation was built by god himself so he was waiting for something more precious he was waiting for something greater than what the world can offer do we truly love what do we have or right now here on this world or what do we going to have in the future what is where is our true love is god's word is asking us so abraham by faith abraham was like the sword sword in the right was like this person you know who's not of this world he was living that kind of life because he knew there is something beautiful is waiting for him moses had to make a choice in his life what was the choice there was this pleasure the happiness of egypt one side or oh, there was this uh, there was this uh, ridiculing there was this pain and suffering that he will have to go through for the sake of god's calling with the israelites and bible says he actually waved both thing together then he saw the suffering with his people is of great reward listen to me my dear brothers and sisters he saw the suffering with the godly people with his people is of great reward come on come on how can moses you you tell me how, how is it possible what did you see when you suffered all, with this people in the land of wilderness every time these people were stiff necked was you wrong in your choice or oh, you say no absolutely not i know what is is waiting for me in the word would ask you the same thing you know sometime you were living in a land where people are discussing about the moral apathy sometime people would ask you why are you standing strong for this why don't you live just like somebody else why don't you indulge in things that the others are also indulging in they might ridicule you for your faith at that point of time then we need to look at the precious great promise that god has already told you when we reject this world there is another world waiting for you which is par excellent which you and i cannot compare with anything else in this world so moses said i am going to reject every pleasures of egypt i am rejecting every every happiness of egypt for the sake of the calling that god has put upon me it's okay to suffer with the lord's people because that of great reward hallelujah when we study the life of city stud the greatest cricketer i used to wonder how this person can leave his cricket career for the sake of gospel he was in the peak of cricket career we know in the ashes in the ashes story there is a cricket you know trophy uh, that happened ashes happens in australia in england you know you know there is a trophy that city stars brothers are named named is still engraved i used to wonder how these people can leave that kind of possession that kind of glory that kind of uh, you know you know you know uh, that kind of a uh, a profession and they were in the peak of their uh, um, uh, their excellence when god called city study just left everything just like that and went as a missionary 18 and 17th century when in us and when in uk there was a great revival do you know many university guys had left their studies and went for the mission we used to wonder how this how does this possible it's because god has enlightened their heart to see something more precious and something more great hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters when you are ridiculed for your faith when you are uh, when you are uh, you know you know uh, spoken ill about your faith let me tell you stand strong it is greatly rewarded god will not forget for what you are doing for him god will not forsake you he will be with you peter says stay strong because there is a great promise reject everything in this world reject every sinful desires which is trying to entangle us you know in book of hebrews chapter 
where Paul reminds us that how important is that whatever that is entangling us, we need to reject every sin that is entangling us, every weight that is actually entangling us. We need to reject those things. We need to throw off those things so that we will be able to run better, faster to the destination. We have a destination. We have a clear idea where we are going to be the partakers of the divine nature one thing the first thing god has given you everything god has given you the divine strength you and i can live in holiness it's not because i'm so holy and i'm so perfect no the divine power of god will strengthen you to do that we read that and we see that in the life of disciples these people were failure you know right they are actually kind of blown in uh, blown out their job you know the very responsibility god had given them to take the gospel they failed in it but you see a different disciple altogether in Acts of Apostles. How? Because they received the divine power from above. When they received the divine power from above, they were so different. So Bible says God has given us the divine power to live a godly life here on this earth. Second thing Bible says that by, you know, how do we get into there? By knowing Christ better. We need to grow in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. Invite Jesus. Let Jesus be your Lord. Let Jesus be your Lord in all situation of your life. Let Jesus be the Lord in every decision that you're going to make for your life. Amen. That's how I will have that intimate relationship with God and I will grow with him. The third thing that he reminds us, there is a precious and a great promise that is waiting for us so that we can reject the things of this world and we can be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. Then Paul, then Peter brings verse five. It says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. I'm not going to read the entire passage there. He's speaking about an effort, <clears throat> right? He says, for this very reason. What is the reason? I have this great promise. What is the reason? God has loved me so much. He gave his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary for my sin. He loved me so much. That's the reason. I know what is the reason? Oh, reason is this, that God's spirit is living in me and I'm a temple of God and I have a purpose. That's the reason. Oh, there is a great promise for me. That's the reason. I know Christ now. That's the reason. And because of this reason, make every effort. Every effort. Okay, there is a work involved in these things. He's speaking about how we need to add more good qualities into our lives. Why do we need to add more good qualities? These good qualities in our life. Verse uh, uh, 9, he says. <clears throat> sorry. Verse, verse 8, he says. If, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful. Why do I need to add all these qualities? The knowledge, the virtue, the self-control, the steadfastness, the brotherly affection, the love. Why I do? Why I do need? Why, why should I need to grow in these things? You know, Bible reminds us. God's word reminds us so that you will not be ineffective. You will not be stagnant in one place. Many Christians we know, we have seen. They start start off their race well, but unfortunately, even after fifty years, even after 20 years, even after 30 years, even after 40 years, there's just somewhere they're stuck. It's not their problem. They've forgotten some of the very basic aspects in the God's word, which helps us to grow. They've forgotten to go to him, you know, who is the source, who is the strength. They've just, they've forgotten to experience a relationship with God. They were just started following a religion. And unfortunately, many became what? without any fruit, unfruitful and ineffective. The Bible says, no, 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 you're not called for that. You are called to run this race faithfully to finish this. And so there is an effort about it. And this, so, so Paul actually says this, right? In the Bible, specifically 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says this, that Paul says, I have fought a good fight. He says there was a war. I was involved in a spiritual war. He says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 onwards. He says, put on the armor of God. Why put on the armor of God? Because you are involved in a spiritual warfare. You need to make some effort so that you and I would grow together into the things what God has called you to. I mean, Paul actually reminds in many times the importance of, uh, of being vigilant. And here also Peter reminds us uh, that uh, to be more diligent. Right? He's, speaking about a, he's, he's speaking about an effort that is actually needed from our side. God is with us, it's true, but victory is only for the one who participates in this battle. Victory is only for the one who truly will fight this battle. 
God is with us, but battle is there for sure. This, this Christian journey is not without battle. We all know it. Right? We are all partakers of this battle every day. Right? We have to battle against. We fight against the sinful desires. We fight against temptations. We fight against testings. We fight against many other aspects which actually trying to lure us from God. We fight against us. And every day this fight is there, but divine power of God enables us. But the fight is there very much. So Peter reminds there is a need of effort from our side. We need to take that effort so that we will grow in God, in Christ. You know, that's why Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 to 14. Colossians, let me try to take Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 to 14. Uh, I'm not going to read everything uh, where Paul says this. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Put to death. He's speaking about a word. It is a, it is a verb. It is a work that we need to put to death everything that of, of earthly. Then verse 12 on what he speaks about. Put on then some of the things that we need to put on. He says, what are the things we need, we need to put off? He says, we need to put to death the sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry, right? Everything, these things we need to put off or we need to, we need to put to death. Then verse 8, it says that uh, now you need to put away these things. What are these? Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. We need to put off those things. Then he says we need to put on something. What? Put on, then verse 12, as God's chosen, chosen ones, holy and beloved. Who we are? We are God's chosen people. We are beloved people, right? Uh, we are holy people. So what do we need to do? We need to put on. What do we need to put on? Compassion, heart, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear, bearing with one another in love. Many things. Forgiving each other. He's speaking about an effort. Yes, Christian life is very much an effort that we need to take from us. And otherwise, we will become ineffective. We, there is a possibility of we becoming stagnant. My dear brothers and sisters, his transformation is possible. I'm just, I'm just uh, stopping here. That's our 40 minutes is up. I'll take another three to four minutes and I, I would like to conclude this message. His transformation is possible. His change is possible. I said, yes. I look at the life of Samaritan woman who came to Jesus, had no life, right? She was a broken lady. Broken lady in a sense, broken than broken beyond what we can ever, I don't think I can ever understand what this lady went through. We can never understand what this lady went through. She has gone through a, a truly a broken experiences in her life. She was a broken lady who came to Lord Jesus Christ. And Bible also says that she was not really broken. She did not have any godliness in there. She did not know. She's not living a, leading a godly life. So we had a lifeless, godless person standing before Jesus. And they got into this conversation. They got into this conversation, speaking about spiritual things. Jesus, Jesus is telling her, helping her to understand that you cannot change your life. But there is a divine presence of God, a divine power of God, which can transform, which can transform you. Jesus spoke about this living water. As Jesus was speaking about the living water, I believe this, the power of the living water slowly was turning her past land her dry land and slowly the streams of the streams of the water started gushing out of her this past land how was it possible it was because the author of the divine power was speaking to her the author of divine power was speaking to her that's why david says in you know psalm number one that every tree that is situated near to the stream that will flourish. Why? It's not because of tree is so good. It's because this root are going to water. He's drawing water. He's drawing strength from the stream. That's why, because this water is, sorry, this tree is situated close or near to the water, this tree will bear fruit. So this lady started bearing fruit. All of us are in a new and transformation. This lifeless lady, godless lady came to Jesus. She became a, a woman, an evangelist, a person who started giving life to other people? Is transformation possible? I will tell you absolutely possible when I look at this life of Samaritan woman who lost everything, who was a broken vessel, had absolutely nothing. She did not know what to do about it. God has transformed her life with a divine power from above. I wanted to encourage my dear brothers and sisters. Let us reject everything that of this world. Let us not cling on to the things of this world because those things are temporal. Shall we, shall we cling, on to, cling on to the very precious, great promise that Christ has given to us? 
and where Jesus has told that, see, I have paid the, uh, you know, we sing in the sale song. So one of the songs we sing that the darling of heaven is crucified. That's the darling of heaven came down to this earth and gave himself for all of us. What are we doing today? Are we, are we directing our life or our life are being motivated by the love of the Lord or our lives are, are our lives are motivated by this gift that God is going to give us? Is our life was motivated by the precious and the great gift that God has for us? If yes, let me tell you, you will never become an ineffective person. You will be effective person. You will be a fruitful person, blessing many more souls around. You feel like you're at dry ground. Do not worry. Come to the source of life. Jesus said, I am the source of life. I am the life. Jesus is the life and he will never forsake you. Are you bogged down by the things at workplace? Are you bogged down by the many other responsibilities of your life? Are you confused? Let me tell you, do not situate you there in the confusion. You know, replace you or change your places and you just go and be planted near to that stream. Let me tell you and draw the strength and the water from him and you will become like that living water, that flowing, that the water will get out of you and will bless many more souls around you. It's all about the divine power that would transform our lives for God's glory. Yes, God has given us everything. God has given us divine power pertaining the life and for the godliness. Let us grow in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. Talk to him every day. Have that communion with him so that you will know him better and so that your eyes will not be dimmed and your eyes will not be blinded by the things of this world. Right, So that our lives will be clearly focused, knowing where I'm going. Let me just conclude with what Paul says about, he says this was, I am just running this race. You know what I'm doing? I'm leaving everything what is behind. I'm just leaving everything behind. I'm just running, I'm striving, I'm striving, I'm running and running and running. I know God has took hold of my heart, my hand. I know there is something is waiting for me, but I did not achieve it at I meant to achieve, I meant to get it, but I'm running, I'm striving forward. I'm fighting this war. I know I'm not alone because God has hold my hand and I will be victorious. And he says, I have fought a good fight and I finished my race and I'm going to get the very crown which God has kept for me. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. You are a place in a place with a great responsibility. I know that your, 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 the country itself is going into a very different direction. We don't know how things are going to be. But in that darkness, you are the light. You are the light of the land. You are the light of that university. You are the light of the, of the company or the firm you're working for. Will you receive the divine from, power from above? And will you give yourself completely to God and say, Lord, you be my Lord and use me. Use me for your glory. Can I ask you to close your eyes together as we just look unto the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we commit our hearts and commit our minds once again before you, Lord. We know that there is so much of renewal that is needed in us, O oh Father God. There are many times, O oh Father Lord, that we lose our focus because our, our focus goes and our focus are divided in many things in this world. But your word reminds us, help us to be focused onto you, Lord, to you alone, O oh Lord Father, because you are the beginner of our faith. And you are the very source of our faith, Lord Father. We pray together, O oh God, that you will enable us and strengthen us. The same way that you are strengthened, Paul. The same way that you are strengthened, Peter. The same way that you are saying, strengthen your saints to do great work here on this earth. I pray that you would strengthen all of us so that we will become a true channel of blessing. A vessel that is filled by the Spirit of God. The same way how you transform the life of the Samaritan woman. A lifeless lady. A lady who did not know anything about godliness. You transferred her and you, 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 you made her an evangelist. We pray together, oh Father, that would happen, hallelujah, that every single person who's listening to this morning, oh Father God, that you will transform their life in such a way that they will become a vessel, uh, they will become a very blessing to many souls around them, oh Father. Thank you for the time that you've given us to listen to your word. Bless us together. Help us to wait unto you, oh Father God, to receive the power to strengthen by you. Enable us so that we will reject everything of this world and give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for being with us and listening to our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we pray together. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pastor and uh, Church, uh, for giving me this opportunity to come to you and to preach uh, God's word. May God continue to bless you. I also request your prayer. 
and uh, uh, for me and for my family we are doing good by god's grace and great responsibility here in bangalore pray that god will continue to use us for god's glory thank you very much god bless